Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's time of reflection here on Facebook. Grace and peace to each of you from God our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and through the ministry of God's Holy Spirit. A couple of days ago, I had the unfortunate responsibility of having to go to home affairs. I arrived at about half past eight in the morning, and even then, the line already stretched all the way into the parking lot. I must admit, though, I was very impressed by how well organized they were, with all the protocols and guidelines in place, social distancing and sanitizing and keeping an accurate register, etc., etc. About 10 minutes into my wait, still with 20 people in front of me in the queue, I witnessed something remarkable. A young mother and father with their newborn child made their way to the line, ready to take their spot at the back of the queue. But almost everybody waiting in line said to them that they have to go to the front, that they have to go through first. And it was in that moment where, despite everybody's own frustration and impatience, despite their own anxiety, our own anxiety, about whether we're going to make it on time to our next appointment, recognized in that small, vulnerable child something to be cherished, to be protected, to be honored. And it reminded me of how often we see in the smallest things tremendous beauty and strength. I remembered then also the gospel reading that is set down for us in the lectionary for today. A passage in which Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to something quite small and insignificant. I'd like to read to you from Mark chapter 4, verses 30 to 32. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable? Shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jackie and I have a, a, a sign that hangs in our dining room, which says, enjoy the little things in life. For one day you'll look back and realize they were the big things. It's often in a time like this where we're overwhelmed by the need we see around us. We find ourselves at points almost paralyzed to inaction because we feel that the contribution we're able to make in a time like this is so small and insignificant. We find ourselves in a, in a place of, of vulnerability, of, of uncertainty, not knowing whether what we can do is really worth it. But a parable like this reminds us that we ought never be afraid of the smallness of things. That we ought to be reminded that there is tremendous strength and beauty often found in very small things. I want to take a moment tonight to encourage you, to encourage each one of us, all of us, to do all that we can, regardless of how small or insignificant we may think it is. Because when we all pull together, and when we make the contributions that we're able to make, however small they might seem to us, it can make a very real and a very big difference. And this is true on a number of levels. Whether it's our own small action in protest to what we feel might be an, an inconsistent or an, or an illogical regulation. It might be joining in protest action that we've seen on the streets of our cities, especially in the last couple of weeks. 
or it could be a small action wanting to meet the need of, of people that we see around us, a food parcel or donating clothes or arranging for transport to the hospital or picking up the phone and calling someone who we know has been on their own for, for weeks and months now. On a number of levels, this rings true, especially in a time like this, that we do whatever we can do, however small or insignificant it might seem, and that together that makes a tremendous difference. Friends, let us not be overwhelmed by the vast scope of need that we see around us. Let us remember these words of Jesus, that even the kingdom of God itself may start as small as a mustard seed, but grows into a large plant in which all the birds of the air may find shade and respite, may make its nest. So friends, in the week ahead, in the weeks ahead, take courage. Your contribution, my contribution, our contribution, small as it might be, is not insignificant and will make a tremendous difference. I'd like to take an opportunity to thank each and every one of you for the work that you've done. For the contributions you've made both at St. Columbus and in society. Thank you for the good that you continue to do. Take courage, be strong and continue. To that end, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, as we bring this time of reflection to a close, I'd like to invite you to reflect on the words that will appear on your screen in a moment, uh, set to a piece of music that's recorded for us by William Earl, and to reflect on the wonder and the beauty, the significance and the power that is often found in the smallness of the things we see around us. God bless you. Goodbye.